This is Motor Merc to Mission Control, initiating pre-flight check and requesting departure clearance. Jazz one I'm sorry, sir, request the kill. Five golf Mike, uh, actually, I'm in altitude, descend me, team 11000. for takeoff. What's up everybody, this is Motor Merc coming to you from sunny Southern California. I just got back from Alaska where I went with my girlfriend on a seven day cruise to celebrate the end of the school year. The most miserable year of school I've ever experienced. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about school today. Uh, I am going to make a video about uh, Alaska, and I may mention school in it, uh, but th that's going to be a long time coming because I've got about 50 gigabytes of Alaska footage to sift through and edit into some kind of an entertaining little montage to share with you guys. But in the meantime, I have something that uh, is a little bit more relevant probably to the interests of people who subscribe to a motovlogging channel. Uh, it turns out that in the past, in the last month and a half, I've been in no fewer than two motorcycle crashes. Both of them very small. Neither of them caused damage that was deeper than the paint on the bike, and neither of them caused damage or injury to me in terms of anything beyond my pride. But they were both learning experiences. So I'd like to share them with you. I didn't do a whole lot of talking while the crashes themselves were being recorded because obviously my attention was elsewhere at the time. Hopefully that's understandable. Uh, but in any case, uh, what I'm going to do is some narration and I'm going to use this video as a voiceover and then I'm going to splice the uh, visuals from the crashes into this video. Oops, signaling where I don't need to. So I might as well jump right in here and start talking about the incidents themselves. Uh, the first one was a parking lot drop. I was actually doing zero miles an hour at the time. It was completely my fault. No other vehicles involved. Uh, something I've been working on lately is my low speed maneuverability, my low speed skill set. Because I, I just want to have a, a better handle on my bike. I want to have better control at low speeds. I don't want to rely on putting my feet down all the time. So I've been practicing low speed parking lot style maneuvers a lot lately. And I was cruising up to school and lining myself up to backwards my way into a spot. And I ended up getting a little too slow and my instincts took over and I hit the brakes instead of the gas. And then I tried to catch myself with my foot and, you know, it just wasn't enough. I couldn't use my one leg to hold the entire weight of the bike up when it was already sort of starting to fall over. So I ended up just kind of laying the bike down very slowly and very gently. LOL. The most gently I've ever laid a motorcycle down. I literally like laid it down. Which I guess is good. It's better than letting the bikes just slam all the way down unhindered. Uh, but it was embarrassing and uh, hopefully having gone through that experience I'll have better reflexes the next time around. Moving on to the second incident uh, which has to do with lane splitting, I want to start off by saying three things about lane splitting, which are important. And I want to get it out of the way before people jump into the comments and start talking about what an inhuman and evil thing lane splitting is. First of all, whether you like it or not, lane splitting is legal in California. Period. 
Second of all, lane splitting is safe. Scientific studies have proven it. Lane splitting is safe. The most common form of automobile collision is the rear ender. If you get rear ended on a motorcycle, it's a big deal. If you're lane splitting between lanes of traffic, you can't get rear ended. You can get sideswiped, but you can't get rear ended, which is far and away the more common type of collision. And this is backed up by statistics and all other kinds of data that has been collected. So whether you like it or not, no one cares what you think. The fact of the matter is that it is safe. Uh, the third thing I want to mention, which is specific to my case, is that the California Highway Patrol, uh, having studied lane splitting and lane splitting incidents and the way people drive and the way people handle motorcycles and traffic, has come up with guidelines for legal safe lane splitting. Uh, these include uh, suggestions, not legal requirements, but suggestions, such as keeping your speed to within 10 miles an hour of the traffic that you're splitting, and maybe not lane splitting when traffic is going over 30 miles an hour. And it's worth mentioning that uh, for my own safety, lately I've been trying harder to adhere to these kind of guidelines that have been published in the past by the CHP because it's important to me not to die! Uh, so anyway, when this incident happened, I was actually adhering to the CHP safe lane splitting guidelines. So, uh, you know, you can argue all you want that what I was doing was unsafe, but oh my god, what is this? Is this pavement? So what passes for pavement in Los Angeles? So anyways, oh geez. So those are the three things that I wanted to preface this story with. Lane splitting is proven to be safe. Lane splitting has been deemed by the state of California to be legal. And I was obeying safe lane splitting practices according to the California Highway Patrol at the time this incident occurred. Okay, now set up for the story. As you'll see in the video, I was splitting between the carpool lane and the number one lane of traffic. I had a Corvette in the carpool lane on my left, cruising along, minding his own business as he should. And some douchebag in the truck decided that he wanted to be in front of the Corvette. Even though there really wasn't room for him to merge into the carpool lane. So uh, he just decided that he was going to bully his way in and he straight up pushed the Corvette out of the carpool lane. You know, the Corvette was laying on his horn and had to hit the brakes and swerve out of the carpool lane to avoid getting hit by the truck. So, you know, <coughs> that guy in the truck. I hope he dies. Literally, I hope he dies. If that's the kind of person he is that he's going to drive around like that and treat people like that. I hope he dies. So anyway, the Corvette guy sort of like reestablished his lane position and straightened out and seemed like he had handled it sort of well and was calm, so I decided to resume my lane splitting. I, I slowed down long enough to make sure that the situation with the truck pushing the Corvette out of his lane was calmed down, and then I decided to, you know, resume my lane splitting past the Corvette. Unbeknownst to me, the dude in the Corvette was having crazy road rage in his head, but it came out sort of in a belated manner and he didn't end up swerving out of the carpool lane across the double yellow until I had already started to split past him. So he hit right into me. said luckily I was obeying a uh, reasonable uh, CHP lane splitting guidelines I was not going more than a few miles an hour faster than the Corvette both of us together were doing less than 40 miles an hour so the differential in speed between us was low our total speed was low and I always try to wear my gear so I was fully geared up and you know my leg got squished between the bike and the car but uh, it you know just didn't really feel like much of anything because I was I'm wearing like inch thick motorcycle boots. So ultimately, you know, it I scratched up my fairings, but I didn't lay the bike down. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, no harm, no foul. And uh, the guy, you know, seemed like a 
perfectly nice dude. He was very apologetic. He didn't hit and run or anything. I sort of expected that he might just plan on keeping on driving, but he, you know, I pulled over and he pulled over with me. He was very apologetic. Ended up being a pretty cool guy. Uh, he, you know, he wanted to sit and wait with me by the side of the road. I mean, there wasn't even enough damage in my mind for this to be reported to insurance or anything, but, uh, you know, we sat by the side of the road and he offered to wait with me while I, you know, gathered my wits back around me. He offered to buy me a beer, take me out for lunch or something. I said, you know what, whatever, it's okay, let's just, like, it was really hard for me to just keep my cool, but I did it because I didn't think it's worth, you know, starting shit with a guy who was openly apologetic and trying to, you know, he, he admitted that he was had had road rage. He admitted that it was his fault for not looking before he changed lanes. He admitted it was his fault for crossing a double yellow. I mean, he completely owned his mistake. And that's all you have to do, in my mind, to, to, you know, it turned, it changed, <laughs> okay, so when we both pulled over, I expected that he was going to start yelling and giving me shit for riding my motorcycle dangerously and speeding between the cars and blah, 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 and I was, like, already mentally prepared to get into a fight, but... It turned out that, he, you know, he got out of the car and he was just completely apologetic and completely owned his mistake. And to me, that makes him, you know, even though his mistake is really borderline unforgivable, like, he came across to me as a cool guy, nice guy, friendly guy. And I, I you know, I felt, I almost felt bad for being in, his, in the way of his road rage for how apologetic he was and how bad he felt. I think I scared him more than he scared me. But anyway, uh, you know, you have a moment like that once in a while, it kind of makes you rethink the whole motorcycling thing. And for, you know, for a good hour there, I, I didn't even want to ride home. I was just feeling shaken up. And the next time I got on my bike, I was, you know, I was a little more scared, a little more skittish than usual, riding among other cars. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I guess there's not a whole lot more to that story. But that's what happened. Hope you enjoyed the footage. And, uh, yeah, take it, take it as a lesson. I take it as a lesson myself, you know, I learned, this is another case of me learning things the easy way, you know, the parking lot drop taught me a little bit about low speed maneuvers, nothing was broken, lucky me. And the lane splitting thing, you know, that taught me a little bit about uh, the value of the, the safe lane splitting practices that I've been implementing lately. Because if I had been speeding between, well, I guess if I had been speeding between, I would have already been long gone before the truck even did his stupid maneuver. But, you know, if, if you're going faster when something like that happens, there's a much higher chance of you going down crashing and the, the consequences being much more serious so it in this case paid off riding responsibly and splitting lanes responsibly so you know I'm in a way I'm happy for having had that experience because it turned out to be a pretty you know it, it taught me a lesson but it again it taught me the easy way so if you're a rider and you split lanes, learn from my lesson, and you too can learn the easy way. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. This is Motor Merc signing out. I will catch you guys in the next one, probably in the Alaska video. So if you care to see my Alaska video, then look forward to that, and otherwise I'll see you in the one after that. Peace!